added a Fulgati jewelry to my outfit, as it's one of my favorite things to wear. Fulgati has its roots in northern India, and it continues to be the traditional needlework of Punjab. The threads used are handmade and of fine silk. Patterns are either geometrical or abstract shapes or flowers, and that's where it gets its name from. These Fulgatis were often made by mothers and grandmothers to celebrate family events and milestones. It was gifted to the daughter so that she could feel enveloped by her matriarchs. The Fulgati symbolizes love and sisterhood. And one of the major outcomes of sisterhood is empowerment. The dictionary defines empowerment as having the knowledge, confidence, or ability to do things or make decisions for oneself. So, how can we empower our own Latvia in today's world? Let me stitch together some stories to find out how we can accomplish this. Like many of you, I have many hats that I wear in my daily life, from being a mom and a wife, to a daughter and daughter-in-law, to a sister and a puppy. These hats are constantly being exchanged while balancing a few hats simultaneously. Is it easy? No. Often one hat gets neglected and pushed to the bottom of the pile, never to be seen again for months. Sometimes one hat is never getting taken off. It usually says mom on it. <laughs> so that I end up forgetting who I am beneath it all. A few years ago, I was beginning to lose myself in the many roles that I play each day. So I had to pause. We cannot give the best version of ourselves. We don't even know what that is anymore. At one point, I was teaching three college science courses, being a mom to my kids during the height of the pandemic, self-enrolled in the Bachelor's of Ed program at Brock, trying to be a good wife to my husband, fulfilling my role as a daughter and a daughter-in-law to our parents. It was chaotic to say the least. But what helped me get through that time was family support. Parents had stepped up to help me, not the other way around. My husband supported and encouraged me to focus on my work in school. I got through this difficult period because of two things. Number one, others believed in me and in my abilities. And two, I was given the opportunity to be empowered by those around me. Once you empower yourself, you're able to help empower others. And that's self-empowerment. When we make a conscious decision to take charge of our own life and destiny. It involves making our own choices, taking action, and being confident in our ability to execute our decisions. My first step at exerting self-empowerment was being myself 10 years ago. Now when I say being myself, I mean accepting aging at 35 years old. That's when I ditched the dye and started growing out my craze. It was a big deal in the South Asian community. I was told I'm too young to go gray, that I look old, or that my face didn't match my hair. At every family event, people had to bring it up. But what's funny is that my husband, who was also going gray, didn't get the same comments that I got. He got, you look so distinguished. It really suits you. The community's double standard really bothered me. Not only did it bother me, I felt like they let me down. Family's supposed to love you for who you are and support your decisions. It just wasn't fair that as a woman, I was put to a higher standard of beauty than my husband. I was expected to never age while he did it gracefully. But I stuck with it and never gave up because it was what I wanted to do. Self-empowerment is when we recognize that we have the power to make our own choices. After five years of hearing them all complain about my hair, now those same people will tell me they supported me all along. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Once you start living authentically and honestly as yourself, you begin your journey of being self-empowered. Do you know what empowerment feels like? Freedom, choices, autonomy, so now you want to make sure that you raise your kids to feel empowered too. Kids are growing up in a very different world than we did. I might be biased, but I think our childhood was the good old days. Life was so simple before. 
He went outside, he played all day, he came home for dinner when it got dark. But if you were a Desi girl, you probably didn't get to do that. That's your brother's story, right? <clears throat> the double standard definitely made a few appearances in our childhood. But today as a parent, I have to be aware and concerned about my child's mental health, physical health, social health, digital footprint, environmental footprint, how to be a smart consumer, and to find Y equals MX plus B. <laughs> and it's all encompassing. And you're trying so hard to not apply the Desi standard to your own kids. You want to make sure that they are raised equally and with equity. As soon as my son was born, I started thinking about the opportunities I'd give to him, but not to my daughter. And that's when my parenting shifted. As they got older, my daughter was given all of the opportunities that I never had. From the clothes she wore, going on school trips, going to dances, and having friends that were boys. I provided her with opportunities to make her own decisions and mistakes and learn from them. But most importantly, I trusted her. I put my faith in her. And she felt that I believed her, and still do. If you want your children, especially your daughters, to feel empowered, you have to believe in them. Cycle-breaking means believing in your children to empower them. Has a nice ring, right? I wish I could say that I started the Cycle Breaking series videos with intention, planning, and a whole host of videos ready to drop on social media, but I didn't. Like many things uh, that content creators post, it was an experiment to see if it resonated with my community. I wanted to share my perspective on a popular video that was trending. I showcased both of my children doing household chores as life skills that they'll need in the future. I even started to teach, sorry, I even stated how teaching my son and my daughter broke down the generational cycles of patriarchy and gender roles. While my experiment was a success, and people wanted more videos on generational cycle breaking. So I tapped into my own experiences, along with those of my audience, and I covered topics like putting up healthy boundaries, supporting our sons with therapy, giving our boys a safe space to cry, being compared to other women in the family, teaching our daughters to be financially independent. Higher education can be pursued by women at any point in their life, encouraging our daughters to go to prom or dance, and the double standard that exists in our community. I even did one based on the report that was co-authored by Manvir on son preference and daughter discrimination. Using evidence to support my videos speaks volumes. I'm often asked how I'm able to share these taboo subjects so openly. And I had to think about that. Because although I understand that they might be taboo in the larger community, these were topics that I was already addressing in my own home. We're doing the entire community a disservice by not talking about them and sweeping it under the rug. And that's the last thing that I want to do as a mother, daughter, wife, and sister. I want to pull these topics from out of the rug, out into the open, and have conversations on it. I want people to use their forebrain to think rationally about why they still perpetuate these behaviors, beliefs, and traits, especially if they're unhealthy, and they no longer serve us. I could not share these topics with the world without feeling empowered to do so. And that's something that the One Sick Mom community has given me. I've been entrusted with their life experiences, and I take that very seriously. These cycle-breaking videos have made me realize that my platform and position can help empower others. My videos are a tool. They provide people with support that they need to shift their own lives. It validates their experiences, and it helps empower them. So many people have lived a history just like those in the video, especially the alcohol abuse one. And they've never been able to convince their family of the trauma they've suffered. These people now feel confident to make changes in their own life, for themselves and for their children. So being in a position of leadership or influence provides you with an opportunity to help empower others around you. Another leadership, 
Another leadership position that I've had is with the Sick Heritage Month team. During my early years of parenting, I felt that I was missing having friends. That does happen. So 10 years ago, I signed up to join the Sick Heritage Month group in Hamilton. It was an opportunity for me to connect with women in my community, do seva for others, share and learn more about my faith, and a chance for my kids to perform seva. It's been all that and more. It's allowed each of us to learn while we're on our own journey. We've organized a music concert, helped curate a museum exhibit, hosted an art exhibit, and so much more. The kids have loved volunteering for these events as it gives them a chance to be a part of a team, take on responsibilities, take direction from leaders, learn their language and faith, make some new friends, and then sometimes meet famous people. When I'm part of a group, I naturally gravitate to take on a leadership role, but that also means that that role has more responsibilities and tasks on my plate than anyone else on the team. Despite everything that we've accomplished at Sick Heritage Month, the saddest part of it was not feeling like you're being supported by the women around you. Perhaps some women feel insecure when others shine bright, or some are not used to cheering other women on. So I know what it feels like to have no support and to carry on planning, organizing, and executing all the events in my own. So having a sisterhood is really important. These friendships increase our production of oxytocin, which contributes to our happiness and our sense of well-being. Sometimes it takes us half our lives to find that sisterhood. It might end up being friends that you found on Instagram in your 40s, or your cousins, or your sister-in-laws. Or perhaps it's a sisterhood outside of family. This, one, this is one reason why I love the Lodley organization. Whether it's with their Lodley to Lodley mentorship program, their BG Mom and Me program, or helping South Asian international students, these sessions offer an opportunity for friendship, affection, and support from other women. It provides a sisterhood, which helps, to, it helps empower other people. When we share a common thread, like preserving our language, seva, or daughter discrimination, we're given the strength to overcome tough times and reach for our goals with support. So this brings us back to my question. How can we empower our own Lodliam today? If you empower yourself first, then you can help empower others, which helps motivate them and fuel their creativity. Being in a leadership role can also help empower others as it's being a part of a sisterhood. But power cannot be given by someone. It must be taken. So you have to provide opportunities for someone to become empowered. You help create the environment to let their personal spark of motivation blaze. They'll either take it or they won't. And if they don't, they may not be ready for the responsibility that's associated with it. So empowering my teenager means providing her with opportunities to learn through experience, even if that means learning from small failures. My role as the parent should be to help guide her, help reduce the barriers that are in her way, and to teach her personal responsibility. I'll need to believe in her, allow her to make decisions, and experience the consequences of her own choices. And as I do all of this, I begin to reduce my power. And this gives my team the opportunity to exert her power in finding solutions to her own problems, in making good choices, and in taking ownership of her life. When we empower our Latvian, we help them build life skills, self-worth, resiliency, and self-confidence. And we help them learn more about themselves and the world around them. And one day, we hope that our empowered daughters will pass on that spark to someone else. So hopefully now, you see the Fogati as I do, as a symbol of sisterhood and empowerment. These traditional pieces originate on a coarse cotton fabric, which symbolizes building on our strengths. The unique shapes and flowers that are confidently embroidered represent the belief that our elders had in us. And those vibrant colors, they're just as vibrant as our matriarchs who helped raise us. And the delicate silk threadwork that binds and supports it all, that's our sisterhood. 
the mothers, grandmothers, and the daughters. And each Bulgari is crafted with love, patience, and time, and gifted only when you are ready. Now find your sister and empower one another, dearest Latino.